Welcome back to another episode of Sal and Pals Go to the Movies. This is another Throwback Thursday review, and I'm here with my friend Tuli. Say hi, Tuli. Hello, guys. And today we're going to be reviewing Labyrinth. And just a fair warning, there's going to be spoilers up ahead, so you've been warned. 16-year-old Sarah is given 13 hours to solve a labyrinth and rescue her baby brother, Toby, when her wish for him to be taken away is granted by the Goblin King, Jared. So let's begin with my pros. First pro is the puppets. They were amazing, but of course, they were done by Jim Henson. And also, he directed the movie and wrote the movie. It's really nice to revisit movies with amazing puppeteers that know what they're doing. Also, let's not forget the executive producer, a good friend of Jim Henson, George Lucas. He also was part of this movie. So that gives you an idea of the caliber of the team and the creativity that got placed into this movie. And they know how important it is to sell realistic elements such as creatures and actual characters so they can blend them together into the story, which is sometimes something that only exists in one's mind. But with them, they actually bring it to life. Next pro is the set design. If you take a close look, everything is done and made in fine detail since Jim Henson knows about puppets. He also knows how important the set design design is to blend the puppets and humans as actors into the same set design. This made it seem like both Sarah and the puppets were below in the underworld and don't seem out of place. So go ahead and rewatch this movie. You can actually see minor things that you think don't matter, but they do play a big role in the set design. For example, the labyrinth's texture, the goblins' homes in the city, and even props that are used by puppets and humans. Next point is the interaction between Sarah, played by Jennifer Connelly, and the puppets. It was really nice acting in Jennifer's part. It's similar to having an actor nowadays using green screen in press and movies. They need to know what they're interacting with and what the new factor is. So that way they can sell the idea of puppets or CG characters being real and not just acting in front of a green screen and seem awkwardly, which sometimes in movies, this can make or break the whole story in the movie. Now onto my cons. I like David Bowie in movies. In this one, he played the Goblin King, which he did well. But the thing that really lacked was when he did his song or music numbers it seemed a bit forced on the audience while i felt that i can digest more songs that involved puppets with david bowie being in the background as adding support i feel that having his songs in the movie really clashed with the story and i would have liked it if he kind of sat back while the puppets did most of the singing and he just added to it next con is the story the story was fine it had a real reason for sarah to set off on an adventure and recruit slash make friends and develop friendship bonds but the issue lies with the ending i wanted her to say goodbye to her friends in the mirror sort of a coming to age story setting the idea of a faraway land and fairy tales are being set aside by her becoming an adult not saying that they could disappear but just for her not to daydream about them as often and maybe see them in her dreams but not all the time but i really didn't like the dance number party at the end of the movie with everybody present because that just brings more questions into light like what will happen with the goblin king will they come back will sarah rule over the land or what will her parents say or do so instead it would be nice to have her grow up a bit and not be a peter pan and refuse to grow up since we did see her go through this challenge to get her baby brother back next con would be the goblin king falling in love with sarah it felt kind of weird and just due to the age difference but since they didn't establish anything before what if they had hinted sarah reading about said character in the book and her describing his appearance and for her to loathe over him in such a way that she brings her love bond to existence in the real world then i would be okay with him coming in and exhibiting his love for her but instead we see it as an older man seeking the love of a younger lady this doesn't really sit well it's kind of weird nowadays with that i'm going to pass it on to my friend Tuli and see how he saw this movie and what grade he gave this movie so Sal mentioned uh, some points that I'll just reiterate because I do agree with his assessment of the movie and that what I enjoyed probably the most about this film, seeing that it came out in the 80s, is the props and the sort of sets that the movie was able to create so that we as an audience can journey alongside Sarah as she goes through this mystical world, this sort of like fantasy world that nowadays, as Sal mentioned, can be done a lot through CGI. So the amount of effort that went into, you know, the puppets and creating the sets from the maze to the dungeons to the swamp area, I mean, 
there were a lot of locations that I thought if a movie like this was made today could have been done not necessarily with less effort but just with a different mentality so I think for a movie like this given when it was made or how it was made I have to at least give it some credit and I think that was the thing that I loved most about this film the story itself it's pretty simple I also have to applaud Jennifer Connelly and David Bowie for being essentially the two leading human actors in the film most of the other characters were just puppets I mean of course we had the younger brother and the parents but they didn't have as big of roles as David Bowie and Jennifer Connelly I thought they did a good enough job to carry the movie through but with that being said I thought the movie could use a little bit more character development as far as Jennifer Connelly's character goes Sal mentioned the ending where he felt that Sarah should have said goodbye to her goblin friends so as a coming to age sort of thing you know as a way for her to sort of grow up and become an adult or just realize something that she doesn't quote unquote need them anymore in a sense make it seem like she grew up or she developed she realized something she learned a valuable lesson but yeah I felt the same way that with her still acknowledging their presence makes me think that she's still going to be dependent on them it would have been a more powerful ending if she had said goodbye to them not just powerful in the sense of the scene itself just you know more emotional and more rewarding with everything that transpired up to that point but in addition to what happened in the ending I sort of want to talk about the beginning of the film because I thought Sarah's character wasn't shown in a positive light in that it came off being kind of whiny the way she reacted towards her parents in particular the stepmom and her not wanting to babysit the brother and how her life is in shambles because things just aren't going her way I would be okay with this but there was just not enough scene between when the movie started to when the brother disappeared that made me feel some sort of sympathy or empathy to a character like Sarah because not only did she behave in such an aggressive way to the brother when she was looking after him you know with the brother crying the way that he was but I thought the movie could have used a couple more scenes to get us to know Sarah a little bit more like in a more deeper sort of emotional sort of way something that would make us understand why she was feeling the way she was was there some sort of emotional distress that she was going through or had been going through in life that we as an audience need to come to understand about her which would garner the sort of emotional reactions she was showing towards the brother or towards the stepmom you know things of that nature and I thought like for an example something that the movie could have done was after the brother goes disappearing a character like Sarah just seems to do 180 and becomes all caring and stuff for the missing child maybe have her first after putting the brother back in his crib she goes back to her room and have her look at a picture of her biological mom something that will allow us to connect to her and maybe make us realize as an audience that she still misses her mom and that she can't let go of the past and I think what this does is it enables us as an audience to connect to the ending of the film where as Sarah and I pointed out earlier if she was able to say goodbye to the goblins at that point then it's a metaphor not only for her being able to grow up as a person but her being able to accept what has happened in the past and her to let go as it pertains to her mother so I believe it's that component about the film that I thought was really missing uh, it didn't have this sort of powerful message that the movie could have had had the movie done a little bit more in setting us up for it versus it being like I said a pretty simplistic story about a girl who wants to rescue her brother who wanders into this mystical land and just comes out at the end being able to do so I thought there was just this message that was just not there and it could have been there like I said it, it just added maybe a couple more scenes but like I said I did enjoy the props the settings I think those were the things that I loved the most about the movie again given that the movie came out in the 80s thought they did a fabulous job so I'm gonna give this film a 6 out of 10 it was definitely one of the earliest films that I saw especially as a child that took us into this wondrous land in which a lot of the props and settings that the characters dealt with were actually in real time in real physical form 
versus, again, CGI and all of that stuff, which still exists, all right, to some extent, but these props in environmental settings, you know, more to that degree than it would have been in a more contemporary film. I totally agree with Tuli's points. That's the same way I saw it. I enjoyed the puppets. I mean, who doesn't enjoy a practical effect nowadays, right? Like Tuli said, there is CG, like the owl and stuff like that at the beginning, but it's only there to start the movie. But when you get into the fundamental part of the movie, it revolves around the puppets. And that's my takeaway with this movie. <laughs> I enjoyed the puppets and the setting, you know, the design and all the props and everything. Yes, the story is okay, but they could have developed them a little bit more, a little bit less of David Bowie taking over with the songs instead, having the puppets lead the musical numbers, such as the Muppets <laughs> that we know. And also, why not have Sarah have a song for her herself with her friends, her companions, the puppets? Also, the ending don't end with everyone's back and let's dance kind of a scene with Sarah. Let her say goodbye to them and gain a little bit more responsibility and accepting that she can't always keep daydreaming and she must grow up a bit also like Tuli said maybe she has to say goodbye to her memories of her mother because when you saw the room it was all about her mother kind of a let go a little I'm not saying forget her mom but just ease off on that my grade for this movie is going to be between a six and a half to seven out of ten I really enjoyed the movie the same way as Tuli did so that does it for this review of Labyrinth please join us next time where we're going to review Merry Christmas Mr. Lawrence understand them do you I learned by you I would commit harakiri Please like, comment, and subscribe. You can find our social media links below. And like always, keep watching movies.